Welcome to Keep Me Up It, where I'll be discussing the social and personal connections to our being because our value matters. So we need to talk about those things that define us, those things that need to praise us, helping you discover new concepts to help you develop. And I promise this is going to be educative, informative, and interesting. You wouldn't want to miss any of our episodes. And if you do, you can always come back for a replay. It's all for free. Just please subscribe to this channel and I'll share among your loved ones. And also follow us on our Instagram page. Keep me up with. Are you ready for today's episode? Let's ride. My name is Tony Ann. On today's episode, I'm emphasizing on succession building, or rather, building succession. <laughs> Absorbing oneself into the intelligence of finances is sufficient. Being broke is no point proving for anyone. I mean, who worship such mentality? And it can't be overemphasized enough that the mind don't prepare mentality most of the times because our mental instructions demifies what pledge is acknowledged into existence. Success is beyond affirming sentences. I think we need to start prioritizing the set of standards for sin to our mentality. Not everything out there is standard for you. That's why having a niche in purpose is superlative. But how do you intend building success? If what I know now was realized earlier, I'll be more proactive than I am now. This is one of such statements that debunks the belief that success is a developmental process. What is succession building? The wisdom into financial intelligence. I'm talking about wisdom. How is wealth built and to be managed? Most of the times, intent is confused by the mentality you have about success. Succession so doesn't fully really come determination alone. Dedication speaks volume. And as a society, we need to stop the blame game and start educating ourselves how to build wealth. Because we focus too much on riches. I understand this is a necessity to meeting our everyday needs, but how do we turn these necessities into wealth? This is what we need to start educating ourselves about. Because how do you sustain or maintain the future when the wisdom of today is in jeopardy by the set of standards into mentality? I remember when my dad passed on and mom stumbled on his investment document. It was very disappointing because this were assets that were worthwhile, but because it failed to educate us about succession building. It was doing it in secrecy and with the intention to surprise us. And I wondered to myself, even if you surprise us with this thing, what gives you the assurance that we are going to develop it, how you, you know, you've programmed the expectations. So you need, you need to teach uh, succession building. You don't just um, feel like You've built a legacy and then you're passing it on. How sure are you that this person has financial intelligence on how to develop these things? How do you think this person has the knowledge of money management? How do you think this person has uh, a developmental you know, character in them you know, to make things progress? You know, but because it failed to teach us this thing, you know, it was trying to surprise us, but life indeed surprised us first so we lost all of this asset and this kind of mentality that my dad had is part of the disorientation majority of our succession today wealth building shouldn't be a secrecy if success is not taught we will keep making and spending money misappropriating the wisdom for stability the, and the challenge isn't in how to make money how do you manage and multiply it Thank God my mom invested in herself. And that was my first lesson in life about success that you must invest in yourself by knowledge and implementing it. She's a professional on us. She took several courses, mentorship programs, uh, a lot of trainings, and she excelled in every education she partook in. This was an investment. She trained five kids on. This is an investment, you know, she, she, she was able to acquire landed properties for herself. And she was able, you know, to like plan a life, plan a retirement, plan a whole lot of things. And nobody knew, understood 
this investment she had, she had in herself. A lot of people think ah, she was doing something diabolical. But no, it was because she understand building succession. She understand investing in oneself. That was why she was able to be at the position she is today. So, But I'm just also saying, our educational system needs to do better than just teaching the theories of money. They need to start teaching how you can turn this money into wealth. How you can turn your ideas into wealth. How you can turn your ideals into wealth. How to build succession. You can't build succession by just books alone. What are the intelligence? What is the financial intelligence that you have? Are you financially secured? Are you financially, you know, buoyant to manage um, wealth? Are you, are you intelligent enough, you know, to develop it into multitudes? These are things I feel that we need to encounter our educational system, you know, to widen our, uh, to widen our brilliance. You know, we can't just be brilliant by grades alone. Just the other day, I was discussing, um, I was having a conversation with my six-year-old niece, and she was reading a passage from um, a story book. But the way she was reciting it, I noticed it was crammed. So I asked her, okay, show me um, a word from your story book as uh, you've been reciting it. And she was unable to identify what she was reciting in the story book. And that's as a result of the mentality that children don't need the clarity of brilliancy. They just have to be brilliant for grace. I wonder who got us there. I, need, I think our educator needs to do much better. But finding a common ground to institutionalize smartness as freedom and wisdom rather than instilling irrelevances as brilliance. Let's start by educating integrity. This is something we don't cherish anymore. This is something we don't teach anymore. This is something we don't educate anymore. This is something we don't preach anymore. We don't preach integrity again. We don't teach integrity again. We just focus too much on riches. Go get this money. Go get this money. But how can you build wealth? How can you build succession if you don't um, know if you don't if you don't have integrity in yourself? If you don't have integrity in yourself, how are people going to trust you? This is one thing you need to learn first. If you are to build succession, so because it has. Why I'm talking about this is because of my observation of the inability to sustain purpose and to outstand this blame game. How do we educate ourselves better? How integrity is smartness. There's only one pattern to integrity ownership, the mentality. Foolishness is a natural roller coaster. Do you get to nurture? I don't think so. In most cases, we are not taught to offer integrity, but to accept it as a leverage to commercialize interest, meaning I'm not with the intent to give value, yet subjecting others to giving value as to what I deserve. That's intensifying and should be abolished. The instillment of integrity must be about growing a legacy instead of instigating a systematic circle. At times, I fear the conventional mystics surrounding our beliefs to think integrity makes you vulnerable is the most dumbest thing ever why do you fear vulnerability you are your own person this is your own person being vulnerable don't make you less human being vulnerable don't make you less of yourself vulnerability is just appreciating your own self your own self because knowing where your weakening point is, you understand what your capabilities are and what your incapabilities are. And if you need to build up further, you know, the likes of Dr. Stephen Akintaya, Pastor Emmanuel, Pastor Samadhi, I mean, and others tell us what integrity does in growth. Because a man who is in betrayal of himself is incapable of keeping the real development. Integrity is your white blood cell to connecting with God. If it's not present, you are living a shadow of yourself. It doesn't matter how you know to make money, how much you've accumulated. Managing wealth on such enterprise integrates wisdom. 
So integrity must be instilled from childhood. And when we teach integrity from childhood, let it be exercised so that the understanding will be enabled in ourselves. We allow that understanding to sink through. We, we live through that understanding. It's one thing to teach. It's another to know. It's the most important thing is to understand and live through that understanding. It's very important. And when it comes to uh, integrity, you know, we need to allow this understanding be enabled. We need to allow it be sick inside of us. We need to live through this thing. It's very important. I feel it is the most catalyst factor we need in ourselves. Integrity. Having a brain child. The brain child is the product of your creative work or thoughts. Literally an original idea, plan, or innovation. You must have a brain child to excel in growth and in being responsible. You see that time I see married couples budgeting their expenses, making savings, discussing finances. I do think life's not that serious now. Why kill yourself budgeting every time? But there's a way life humbles you to get the authenticity in picture. The brain child has been a bastard for far too long that those who adopted it had multitudes in productivity. You know, your life has to be structured in plans to avoid deviation, even at the sight of challenges and adversities. I think I was six or seven at the time. Whenever myself and pair see adults pushing trash wheels as a form of living, living, we lambast them for wasting the resources in them to be better. We rebook that a lot for ourselves because our parents wasn't like that. But how are we to make better of ourselves? Now as an adult making mistakes, taking risks and seeing the reality of those adults very clearly now, and we are at that edge that if we take a leap that is misstep, it might turn out like them, but we don't want to be like them. So there's a limit to repetitive mistakes. That's why it pinches me to the bone when an adult still asks to be spun fed how to make usefulness work for them. I don't understand. You can't be coached on a skill taught how to turn that skill into finances and yet you still want the same trainer to spoon feed you how to make usefulness of yourself to the skill and to making it into finance i don't understand you can't be taught everything you can be shown the way shown how it's done it's left to you now to implement your actions to it it's left to you to strategize upon it so you don't have to allow anybody or expect anyone to spoon feed you on how to be useful to yourself so in bearing kids the brain child should and must be your first according to rena mockery's post on instagram he said your first child is not a boy or a girl it's your brain child any man without a brain child should not even think of getting married. If you marry without a brain child, you may be biologically fertile and economically barren. A brain child brings money to feed your children. You are probably reading this on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Each of these businesses were the brain children of an entrepreneur. Note that Mark Zuckerberg did not have children until after his brain child, Facebook, was successful. Jack Dozy of Twitter does not have children, yet you with no job or business have multiple children. He choke. So, with your life, you must have a brain child. You, you, it necessarily don't have to be that you need to have a brain child for the purpose of getting married. It's for the purpose of being responsible that you need a brain child for. A brain child is a structure plan to your life on how to be responsible to the society, to your family, to your work, 
in management, in relating, in communicating, in allowing understanding be an enabling factor for everyone. And understanding irrelevancies from relevant. This is the essence of having a brain child. So, talking about financial intelligence, this is the gathering of information about financial affairs of entities, businesses, ventures that you are interested in. In order to understand their nature, capabilities, and scope of intent, what are the purposes of financial intelligence? This is knowing to identify financial transactions, involving tax evasions, budgeting, evaluation, most importantly, in order not to fall for business scheme that incriminates. Now, this the old idea of being financially intelligent but on knowing how to collect information about business interested in already involved knowing how to do analysis such as identifying high risk discovering mishaps accounting and budgeting knowing to relate in competition and evaluating the market the benefit is having the orientation on how and what works economically as working smart how do you make money how do you save money how do you manage money? How do you invest money? How do you multiply money? You must realize money is not wealth. And wealth is not money. But you must know how to deal with money to build wealth. Reason being that money is a continuous necessity and exchange we cannot do without. But wealth is built by those who see the need to money working for them. Instead of them working tirelessly for money. This goal might be for generational sustainers in fortune or side legacy to the society to develop mentality from the disorientation of moving forward i am not to tell you what to do with your money or um you know spoon feed you that it's a machine you must be well but think about your money working for you how would you feel isn't it a great initiative w wouldn't you agree you know, the difference between the rich and the poor is the kind of information they have access to and the quality that guides their mentality about it. You know, the kind of information they have access to and the quality that guides their mentality about it. So if, if you're a rich person, the kind of information you have access to is different from the one someone who is not rich, you know, doesn't have access to but in all of these things the quality that guides your mentality about it is the most important thing because once you, your uh, your mentality is guided by something that is quality then you will be productive you will know to invest you will know to build succession you will know to build wealth there are a lot of people who are poor they don't have access to certain kind of information but they have this quality that guide their mentality into them eventually getting access to those information that enable them to invest build wealth and build succession so you need the quality that that will guide your mentality about building wealth and this has to be a DNA running system for inheritance, not the other way around. Because building wealth is sensitive. You know, it's better to frolic with budgeting than being exploited by opportunity. Yeah. It's better for you to just frolic, you know, budgeting than just be exploited by opportunity. Because even by opportunities, you can be exploited. It depends on the quality that guides your mentality. The opportunities can exploit you when you mismanage your guts or resources. Every time you think to yourself, what's purpose? In befriending the brain child, you are snapping into the colon of future affections. I'll give you an exaction. The poor spend what they have and invest with what's left. The rich 
spent what's left investing what they have. The wealthy invest what they have, letting the investment work for them. So being rich and wealthy is a choice. Being poor is a mentality filled with illuminations. So what is it going to be for you? Do you still want to be sink into the understanding or into the mentality that is filled with illuminations that is not moving you forward? I understand there are situations, there are circumstances, but you can always change your situations. You can always change your circumstances. It depends on what mentality or uh, it depends on what quality guides your mentality. If you if you depend on um, quantity to guide your mentality, your results will be about it. But if you allow quality to guide your mentality, the result will be about what guides that mentality. So it's very important. So even you get uh, you have access to the right information if the if the quality that guides your mentality is not standard enough, you won't get that expected result that you've always dreamed or wished for. So you need to be you need to take into consideration what guides your mentality. So that it doesn't disrupt the information that you will have access to. So session building is all about maintaining a sane human mentality for being responsible, healthy, analytic, smart, and informed. Do you know you can be very financially intelligent as a young person than as an adult? I gave you. Okay, let's play the devil's advocate. The sense of responsibility shadows you as an adult than as a young person. So, knowing to be informed and articulate on certain things is majestic. The whole essence of growth is demystifying the glitches supposedly created in mindset. Being a young person, you understand what you are responsible or um, what your responsibilities are. But as an adult, responsibilities are tabled at you, even when the majority of it, you know, you are not responsible uh, for. You know, because as an adult, you are viewed in this persona that yeah, you must be responsible for everything. Even when you know inwardly, you are not responsible for a lot of things. The majority of things are not your responsibilities. That's why you need to be financially intelligent. Know how to budget. Know how to save. Know how to make money. Know how to invest. Know how to, be, to, to, to secure your finances. Because as, an, as a young person, uh, responsibilities don't down on you like when you are as a, an adult. As a young person, you can refuse certain responsibilities. You can even you know, classify yourself of what you are responsible for. But then as a young person too, you can mismanage your finances. So when you know that you've classified yourself into what you're responsible for, that classification, what is it all about? Is it just all about you know just spending and just wasting it? Is it because you know that you can make more of this money? You can just you know misuse it. You need to apply quality into the guidance of your mentality. Also, as an adult. You need to understand that it's not everything that you're responsible for and it's not everything that is your responsibility. Know your responsibility, be responsible as a, as a person by investing, by managing your finances, by budgeting, by saving, by knowing the limitations to your spending. It's not every time that you have to spend on everything Spend on what you need, not just about uh, what is wanting to you. Because every time you spend on what is wanting to you, you know, it, it deviates you from your original plan. It deviates you from your brainchild. So you, that's why I talked about previously that you need to enable understanding in you so that you can live through it. It's one thing to be taught. And it's one thing to know, but 
the main priority for you is sinking and enabling yourself into that understanding. Live through it. Don't deviate. Be consistent. Be relevant to your own person. Be relevant to your humanity. It's very important. That's how you can be financially intelligent. What's making money to build a wealth? Apparently, money don't make you wealthy. This is a necessity to meet every day. Wealth is a choice to creating and developing money investment. To stay clear on what money investment is, this is what you start your dedication on. I mean, when I was at age 11 or 12, I knew to save every allowances that I get. Even though I was living at my grandma's at the time. This discipline went further till I was 16. But you know, when I got to 20 years old, I started spending recklessly. To the last, every of my savings, every of any money that I make, I spend it to the last. Because I, I have this mentality, this belief that the next day I'll make another one. The next week I'll make another one. The next month I'll make another one. Because I felt like knowing how to make this money is enough. But I there is something life dawns on you and you start asking yourself like why do what you do for what exactly do you exist for for what are you responsible of or for these responsibilities are they your way to show that you keep asking yourself a whole lot of things and let me tell you age is not something to emphasize on but the stages you attain you need to realize the changes that comes to you. How has these changes impact your life? How has these changes enable understanding for you? Because you, you, you don't just have to learn alone. You need to be involved in the clarity of this understanding. You must allow this understanding to be enabled in yourself. You must live through this understanding. It's very important because knowing to make money is coherently excited. Either you catch on quickly or later, but sooner you get to realize how you are making money is not enough. Is it enough? What is needed to influence, you know, creating your own money works, not work for money. Wealth is not theoretically inclined. Either you get a feeling of pick out. It's just three phases to humans, poverty, riches, and wealth. Impoverishment, a bystander situational circumstances, which, if care is not taken, can be a generational transmitted infliction. That's you know, that's why you must not leverage on these circumstances like it's unchange unchangeable for you. Don't think like because you are born into poverty or you are coming from poverty, you cannot change um that situation for yourself, you cannot change that circumstances into standard for yourself. It's all about the mentality, uh, the quality that you are, uh, you let guide your mentality, you know, and the kind of information you have access to. So, you know, in, in doing all of these, and I must also tell you that poverty, riches, wealth, they are treatable inflictions. So, the test frolicking with how old you are to making impossible possible like i said earlier don't frolic with how old you are age is nothing but a number it doesn't count how early or how sooner you will be successful it's just there for you to know how many years you've existed in life it doesn't count on how responsible you will be that's why i don't believe in the saying that a fool at 40 is a fool forever. I don't believe so. I remember a day I was talking with um, um, my reading coach, and I told her that I, I had some people that they, they weren't successful until they were, they were 40, and she was kind of surprised. I said, it is true. But when you see them that it's until they were 40 before they realized success, you feel like, they wasted all of their youth, in which they didn't. They put in so much effort. It just didn't happen then. So, 
We are lucky differently and we are blessed differently. What matters is how you brace yourself about the changes you've attained, how it has impacted you. Change is constant. It comes to us at every point in time, you know, we attain those stages. So this is one of the things improvement does, augmenting your ego effortlessly on nothing. What's the pride of a man who's not, who's not trying yet picky about opportunities? I get sick of all of these things. Like, you are not trying, you're not making an effort, yet opportunities are tabled in front of you and you're still picky. Feel like such person is just unserious about their life. They're unserious about, you know, purpose to life. To so every scope of meeting daily needs, it becomes a necessity to be useful to taking up responsibilities. I mean, conquering a war isn't a rel isn't reliant on just words, affirmation. Affirmations is a utility factor. Everything that is necessary makes it compulsory to be mentally. Important things are taken for granted most times. That's why making money isn't important. If you can't think to meeting up basic needs, you know, a man without a brain child should present himself in the institute of wanting to build and raise up a family. Because such person can never hold it together piece by piece. As a person, do you just learn or know to make money? Is it enough? I mean, people die for that hill. You don't have to die for anything to be successful. What it takes is knowing and learning to develop money that works, not just to work for money, to spend and resolve situations. You don't have to just work for money because you have to pay bills, you, you have to do emergencies. It must be about money working for you. So make money to secure meeting up needs and build wealth by developing needs that hasn't been thought about and turning these to consistent lay grounds. Let me give you a drawing index on what's making money to build wealth. One, money is a commodity. It's consumed. Whatever energy infused to making it is because you want to spend on bills, spoiling yourself and other needs. Even when you save, does that indicate wisdom? The only wisdom around it is propelling on the relevant information, marinate on strategy, then invest. Relevant information could be what skill you are to acquire, business to start, or career, dig into knowing everything it takes. Marinate a strategy by evaluating capabilities around it. How can you sustain longevity productive, productively? What visions are you on about? Three, invest in yourself, acquiring knowledge, mentorship, collaborative effort, creating team with like minds. Be open about your weaknesses in attaining mastership. Don't fail yourself by not wanting to lose comfort zones. The essence of effort making is to experience the adventurous reality uh, the adventurous reality. What would you think blessings and manners will fall from anywhere for you? If you don't know how money is being made and managed, building wealth wouldn't cross your mind. Now to talk of being a choice. Making actionable choices. Instincts would never deprive you of choice making. But what action is to choice making? People make choices that are not actionable. I mean, they regret the steps taken because everything is missing about that choice to them and them to the choice. Why are you making choices that's not actionable? Why are you taking steps that you are less informed of? Why make a choice of let them see I'm doing or I've done something? Your choice to the life you own shouldn't be worthless as a penny that's not valuable. Everybody talks about intent. It's a choice wanting to be intentional. But how valuable is this intent to your choice? And how actionable are they to your capabilities? Leave a quiet determination thinking too deep. 
just for a second ask if I'm pulled by the side to choose to save my life by either jumping off the leap or swimming through the waves, what would it be? It signifies that as hard as it is to be intentional, the reward is basic and productive. How can you make actionable choices? Is it by being intentional? Yes, and maybe not. To be honest, you can't know what is actionable by intentions. Only by information can you decipher actions by intention. If you are not well informed, you'll keep repeating the same circle. No changes. Your intent is just an influence. The informations are what makes product. In getting relevant information, indulge in reading books. Absorb yourself in mentorship programs more than just taking courses. Whatever you learn, don't just learn the skillful part. Learn everything about it, the business part, the etiquette, the guides, and so on. And learn to collaborate. Nothing is done alone. You won't achieve anything. I mean, I wonder why wealth building is referred to secrets at times. It's a choice. The information is quite out there. Socialize with masters. Be healthy. Know to take breaks. Don't overwhelm yourself like a brainiac. Trick your quitting to try once more every time. Be competitive. This is to be innovative and mentally a lot. Don't be a fanatic, a narcissist, egocentric. Build your own freedom. Action is more than just saying, I will do it or that um, you are doing it. It is about what exactly are you doing? Is it worthwhile at all? I got an honest joke in 2020 when I first um, presented my first um, um, podcast. I titled Strip It. So I shared the voiceover and ad cover on my WhatsApp status. I guess who laughed at it? Someone so close to me. Like a friend. She didn't mean it that I couldn't do it. But the thought was, what am I trying to do or do it? So even the word, I'm not interested in the action of words spoken, but action worthwhile. It's a soccer season where you have to talk less and do actions that are worthwhile. That's how to make actionable choices. You're listening to keep me up. What is investment? The conversion process of ideals for profit and allowing your money work for you smartly. Investment or investments are your what night armor that shield against financial discrepancy. There's joy to earning, but it gets sour when it's only spent and not invested. Here's also a form one inject. Don't create or or be involved in investments for the idea to clean dirt. People have tried these you know, centuries back, even in this um, age we are, you know, people invest to clean their dirt. But I feel like this is your lifetime security. You shouldn't jeopardize it by um, involving yourself, you know, in this um, kind of scheme of trying, of um, building investment or creating investment based on the fact that you want to clean your dirt. No shouldn't go in that direction it is i don't i don't see that as a financial security i don't see that as a, a proper investment because at the end of the day you are going to lose all of this investment to either persecution or trying to buy your way out of all of this mess because money not worked for is mismanaged even if you invest it it will be mismanaged either by running it on persecution suit severally or trying to buy your way out of you know personal affairs money can also be mismanaged when there's no sense of budgets or compromising for what's not your responsibilities when you understand everyone's interest is themselves you shouldn't allow anyone's irresponsibilities done on your finances if allowed everything you have will be gone and there will be no one to help you out or resurrect your fully self-fought Your first investment must be in yourself. Invest in knowledge. Invest in mentorship. Invest in information, clarity, wisdom, intelligence, education, efforts, actionable choices, discipline, and health. The second investment must be on conceiving and bearing a brainchild. Have a plan. Structure the dimensions. Have a strategy. Focus. Be dedicated. 
be consistent, be approachable, be communicative, turning your knowledge to finance. Your third investment must be on budgeting, savings, money management, debt relief plan, goal structure. Your fourth investment must be on where are you putting your savings into? Is it in the bank or on assets? Assets are landed properties, business establishment, stocks, shares, e-coins, etc. Your fifth investment must be on vacations, relaxations, nature exploration, and so on. Investment is how concerned and important you value your existence development nobody comes to you as a destructive and man, even though it's an intent for humans to the encyclopedia into your environs is everything do you ignore what can be destructive or is to you little signs ignored escalate into what we get to evolve around does development mean progress yes in our heads development is believed to doing the right thing being a perfectionist needing no correctiveness whatsoever if so indeed i think we are all a development entity or entities we get destroyed by what's infused to mentality i can't overemphasize this there's so much differences to what's sung in the mind and what's choreographed in mentality two complete rhythm trying to beat a common blues the common blues is development the mind has a certain structure for it and the mentality is truncated about this is how it should it should have been. Sometimes our mentality is just jealousy, in the incense of viral outcomes. Do you need to be calming down? Don't let mentality overshadow the relevance in being my every possibility was once impossible. It's never going to be easy, don't doubt. If the approach is like that, do you expect a lady to give in to your request instantaneously? No. Is it possible she accept? Yes. Is it impossible? No. A choice will only differ that will only differ. That doesn't mean it's impossible. The only reason, the only reason for dreaming easy is how visionary is to mental instruction. <music> I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Keep Me Off It. You can always have a replay of this episode and every other one on this channel. And please, don't forget to subscribe and share among your loved ones. And also follow us on our Instagram page, Keep Me Off It. Let's continue the conversation in the comment section. Until I come your way next time, have a fabulous moment.